Welcome to the first episode of the Thai Cataholics podcast. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is James Hemingway. I've been a season ticket holder basically my whole life. And really the point of this podcast that I want to get started is I just think there needs to be a little more a critical voice on the Hamilton organization, the Thai Cat organization. Uh, you know, you look online, you see social media. It's a lot of the same stuff. Hey, great season. We'll get them next year. What a great family. What a great ride. This kind of stuff. Really, we've been accepting mediocrity for years now. Years. So, all I want to do, again, give a critical voice, poke some holes in what management's doing, the organization's doing, uh, you know, coaching decisions, that sort of thing. So, without further ado, I'd like to get into the first episode and just give you my recap of the 2018 season. And we're going to start in the offseason. I'm going to look at a couple of moves that uh, GM Eric Tillman made. And we're going to start right off, beginning of February, Ticats traded a fourth-round pick for Charleston Hughes. When I woke up in the morning and I saw that we got Charleston Hughes for a fourth-round pick, I was ecstatic. I thought, great, Charleston Hughes, the guy has not been slowing down, coming off the end. I'm a big believer. And if you have a great pass rusher, you're going to have a great defense. Later that day, pretty sure it was that day, they traded Vernon Adams, or sorry, they traded Charleston Hughes for Vernon Adams. And I wasn't even upset. I thought, cool. So we got Jeremiah Mazzoli, Johnny Manziel, and Vernon Adams, three very similar quarterbacks. They can run around. They can wing it. You can run the same system. I was like, cool. If one doesn't play well, you got the next, and you even have another. But then, fast forward to the offseason, we're in training camp, and they cut Vernon Adams. Why? Because they were very high on Dane Evans. And I'm not taking a shot at Dane Evans. I saw promise in him, too, just like they did. But they had Dane Evans on the practice roster last year. So don't you think that they would have had a read on this guy already and would have said, we don't need to trade for Vernon Adams. We, we have Dane Evans. So basically... Tillman traded away a fourth round pick for absolutely nothing. So if you woke up in the morning, you opened the Hamilton Spectator, and you saw Eric Tillman throws away a fourth round pick, and we got absolutely nothing. How would you feel? You'd be probably pretty pissed off, right? So there's my take on that. Moving on, I want to take a look at the CFL draft. In the CFL draft, you'll remember, we traded up for the number one pick in the draft. We got rid of uh, Bauman, an all-star lineman the year before. And another one of their first round picks to move up for the first spot and take Mark Chapman. And at first, I, again, I thought, great move. Great move. We got a good Canadian receiver. Uh, but fast forward a bit during contract negotiations. And basically, the kid made it clear he does not want to come to the Canadian Football League, and at least not what they were offering. So don't you think Tillman or whoever was in charge of the situation would have called, you know, his manager or sorry, his agent? Chapman's agent, or Chapman, or Chapman's parents, I don't know, and said, hey, we're going to make this move. We're going to make offer you this contract. Are you going to come play? Don't you think you would have done that before trading up? So, again, Ty Cats got rid of a first-round pick and bombing for absolutely nothing. This kid does not want to come to Canada. At least that's my take on it. So there's two picks and a player that the Ty Cats have gotten rid of, Tillman has gotten rid of, and we had nothing in return. Fast forward a bit to the Johnny Manziel situation. The Johnny Manziel situation, again, I was kind of high on having him as a backup. I'm sure a lot of fans were. It was great. At least we got to see Johnny run around and wing it a little bit. It was fun. Um, and then they made the trade. And a lot of fans were high on the trade because, you know, we got two first-round picks in exchange. But if you go back to my last point, what do we do with those two first – what do we do with the last year's first overall pick? We got a guy that doesn't even want to come to Canada. So we got two more of those, so we'll see. Hey, I guess he's batting 50-50, Tillman, on these first-round picks so far. Sirocco turned out to be okay, but anyways, you saw what he was able to do with that. And they also got rid of not only Johnny, but a starting left tackle. And you also got rid of basically a blocking tight end. And uh, I just think, you know, they said, well, you got to give a little value to get some value. You knew Coach Sherman was high on Johnny Manziel. He recruited him at Texas A&M. So do you really think you had to get rid of all of that to get two first-round picks in the Canadian Football League draft? And the two players that they got, Chris Williams and Westerman, they were both free agents last year. So if Tillman was really that high, if he was really that high on these two guys, why didn't we just make a push during the offseason and try and sign him? Instead, we had to trade for him? You could have had him. You could have went after him. And I, again, I, I didn't even really like the players that they got. I thought Williams is an aging receiver, hasn't shown that much, kind of overpaid. Uh, Westerman, I don't know, Winnipeg let him walk, right? Um, the guy I kind of wanted to get was that Aki. Uh, I don't know, what is he, linebacker, defensive back there for 
uh, Montreal. Ottawa got him for next to nothing. He's now playing in the Great Cup with Ottawa. So uh, that would have been a guy I would have liked to see to kind of help out that defense. Uh, but anyways, there's my take on the quick uh, quick little off scene. Let's move on. I know the Johnny Mansell trade did kind of happen earlier in the year, so it was actually the season. Let's move on to the 2018 season. Um, and basically, I just thought coaching lost us a lot of games. There was three games, one early against Ottawa, where we won the coin toss, and we decided to kick off, June Jones decided to kick off in both halves. Now, I recall that we lost that game by a possession. We almost scored to, to win it at the end, but they lost by a possession. And after the game, you know, talking about how turnovers really decided that one and came down to the last play. So this turnover didn't really store, store up on the score sheet, but you had a chance to take the ball, and you decided to kick to them again. Both halves, you decided to kick. You won the coin toss, and you thought the win was more important. And you're going to talk about how turnover battle cost you the game. Don't you think that's something that really should be brought up with Coach Jones? He did this three times all year. He also did it in the last season game against Ottawa, or, you know, the last game against Ottawa, not the playoff game, the last regular season game there, um, because he thought the win, actually, you know what, it wasn't the last race, it was the first one in Ottawa. It was that windy game. He wanted the win in both halves, and, I mean, I won't touch on that too much, but you saw how that went. Uh, basically, the defense looked like they were starting to kind of, they started out hot, then they started to let up a bit at the end of the, the end of the first half, and I thought, okay, that's fine. Hey, we got a field goal at the end of the half, I remember. And I'm thinking, okay, we get the ball, great. We'll go down, we'll score. We were already up. Instead, they kick off again. Their offense was just starting to get moving. They, they had Sinopoli basically wide open down the middle all game. And they just kept going back to that like they did all year. Um, so I thought there was three games right there that you kicked off in both halves, and you lost all three games by, uh, by one possession. So there's one coaching move. Um... Another coaching move that I didn't really like was the BC game uh, out in BC. And if you recall, I believe we were up six driving. It would have been about a 45-yard field goal at the end of the game, about a minute, minute something left in the game. And if you hit that field goal, you go up nine. Game's over. Two-possession game. Jones decided to, or we might have been up seven. Yeah, I think we were up seven. Yeah, yeah, so we were up seven. Field goal would have put us a two-score lead. Jones decided to punt. And... The punt went through the end zone for a single point. Cats up eight. But BC gets great field position. They march down. They tie the game. They win in overtime. And after the game, June Jones said, well, I, I didn't think that that was going to happen. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what BC thought was going to happen. They were going to take that point, give the point up, go tie the game and win it. And that's what happened. So another area where I don't know ever if there was a worse decision made in professional sports by not trying to kick the field goal. It was a 45-yard field goal. I mean, if you don't think your kicker can make that, then maybe it's time to get a new kicker. So not going for a two-score lead that late in the game. That cost them another game. And um, yeah, I already talk, touched on the Ottawa win game. So those were kind of – those were four games right there that really coaching, uh, coaching cost them flat out. So let's move on to the postseason. And heading into the East West crossover, the Eastern semifinal game, I was saying all year that uh, the only coach kind of worse than June Jones at making these game time decision calls was Wally Buono. I mean, the guy doesn't even wear a headset. So I think he's been consistently at the bottom of the league in terms of challenges. He, he said it before. He likes to go off of his gut. Look, the headsets are there to help you, Wally. So, I mean, I thought, yeah, the one coach that our coach can outcoach is Wally Buono. And as I'm Picking apart June Jones here, I do want to say that I think he's a great offensive coordinator. I think he did a great job kind of getting the offense rolling. Um, but I'm just picking apart these game time decision making. I think there needs to be someone, um, you know, there to say, hey, hey, Jones, this is June, June Jones, this is the time you should probably kick that field goal, or you know, maybe we should take the ball at the start of the half, that sort of thing. So, anyways, the BC game that was a riot. Had a blast. Cats blew him out. I was high on him again. I'm thinking, okay, great season. Hey, I'm cool. And then we go to Ottawa. Cats paid two and a half money line. I'm high on the Cats, so I hammered a lot of money down on the Cats money line. And they just got absolutely embarrassed for the fourth time by Ottawa all season. I mean, Glanville said it earlier this year, I think on a podcast or something, talking about how, you know, once he sees a team once, he really figures them out. Um, they didn't do anything special. I hear a lot of, a lot of, I won't name any names, but other podcasts that talk about the Cats, talking about how Harris is an absolute baller. Um, you know, you got to tip your cap. I mean, 
I think anyone that can throw 10 yard hooks was it going to be able to go whatever would he go 27 for 30 or something for six touchdowns. I mean, all they did was run hooks in between our zone. There was on the first drive we managed to hold them because Cats decided to blitz and go man. And Harris had to hold on to the ball. I think he skipped one into the ground, held him to a field goal. So then Ty Cats drive down. We got third and one on the one. You just saw that their offense basically moved the ball at will, and you had one play where you didn't make a play on the ball, but Harris made a mistake, and you're able to hold the three. Well, based on what you saw in the defense, I think that was a great time to be going for the touchdown there because you got to keep scoring points with them. You saw that Ottawa was going to be scoring points unless you can make an adjustment. Um, and they didn't. They opted to, you know, it's like all year when it's second along and you run a draw, uh, you know, kicking the field goal on third and one. It's like spineless football, right? So then defense goes back out there and go right back to the zone. Harris is just, you know, Sinopoli, Ellingson. They're just hooking in between this zone, pitch and catch, pitch and catch all the way up the field. They would do the read option too. And Tracy was just always going after, um, going after Harris. Now, I'm I'm not going to blame Tracy. I think this is probably a coaching move because he was just consistently going after Harris. Guys, Harris is not going to run the ball over you. At least make him beat you early. And instead of, you know, making a tackle in the backfield, uh, the Ottawa running game was able to pick up five, six yards a pop because of it. And then they go back to the, you know, hit the hit the hook in the zone, keep moving the ball. That's why he went 27 for 30 or whatever it was. And he didn't have to stretch the ball hairs. I would not say he was a baller that game. He even said it himself. He's had a tough time scoring touchdowns all year. But not against Hamilton because they ran the same stuff. They ran all throughout the regular season. They didn't change. Why would they? They went 3-0. and Why would they change? And Glanville just made no uh, you know, no adjustment at all. Even at halftime, they came out and they just ran the same wimpy little D. You'd have second and 10, you know, you'd, you'd run defense, played well. You'd have second and 10, and you'd send a blitz. The whole point of the blitz is the ball's got to come out quick. So wouldn't you want to play some tight coverage? No, they're dropped back at 15. They hook in front of the coverage, first down, easy pitching catch. I don't think Harris is a ball for doing that. Um, a couple other points I had on that Ottawa game were, uh, I think, I kind of look at, you know, what, what's successful in football. You look at Belichick, obviously, right? What does he do? He takes away your best players. So I thought, you know, who's, your, who's Ottawa's best players? Ellingson and Sinopoli. Um, so we got Delvin Bro, you know, the Bro Show. He's an island out there. Um, can he maybe move inside Glanville and try and shut down one of these guys? Shut down Ellingson and then play double coverage on Sinopoli. Have daily shadow over top. You know, or vice versa, whatever you decide to do. But at least make them beat you with another thing. Like, you know, you can put Frankie Williams out on the corner on Spencer. Spencer's fast, but Frankie Williams is fast. That guy is a baller. That guy can run. Um, so that would have been my defensive adjustment. Take away what they do best, and that's Sinopoli and Ellingson. And they did. They absolutely scorched Hamilton's defense. So, again, just no adjustment there. Uh, even the blitzes, you're sending Udamba into the, as a, uh, you know, as a blitzing linebacker. Uh, he's your coverage linebacker. You got Simone and Dean, Simone and uh, Simone Lawrence and Larry Dean sitting in coverage. Those guys aren't cover linebackers. I think Dean is great at shutting down the running back. Simone, in my opinion, should almost be a defensive end. That guy, every time you set him in there, he's getting to the quarterback. But you dropped him into coverage while they were just hooking uh, all over the Cats' defense. It didn't matter. Uh, you also had that Waka. I mean, um, no. You know, no shot to him, but he hadn't played all year. He's a special teamer. All of a sudden, he was getting significant sacks in that game. They were just kind of picking on him on that side, uh, running on him, throwing on him. Um, and then, yeah, how did it end up? Well, Harris set a CFL freaking playoff record for passing touchdowns. And sounds like Glanville still has a job. So how do, how do you give up 106? I know the record's 106 year old, but the league's been around for 106 years. Harris sets a passing record on you. It's the fourth time you played them this year, and you still have a job? So, I mean, that's my take on that. Um, that's pretty well wraps up the 2018 season. Those are my points. Um, again, I don't think that this is a talent issue. I think there's a lot of talent on this team. I just think they're poorly coached. There's, there's certain game time decisions that really cost us games. Um, and, yeah, I just want to keep this podcast going. And keep being critical of some of these things. And, and really, I think we should be expecting more. Uh, it's great cup or bust every year, in my opinion. Um, playoffs is an absolute bare minimum in this league. Six teams make it at a nine. It's a bare minimum. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, I mean, who am I? I'm James Hemingway. Like I said, I've been a Ticats season ticket holder my whole life. Uh, my grandfather, he played for the Ticats. His twin brother, 
also played for the Thai Cats. They were left end and right end. So kind of born into it. Been uh, been a Thai Cats just living and breathing it my whole life. And really the big reason, the other reason why I started this is, you know, I touched on how I think we need to be more critical and stop accepting mediocrity in this family thing. So I kind of expressed some of these concerns. There was an Instagram post. I was drinking a little bit. I saw the post come up. And uh, so I left a comment. I left kind of a summary of what I talked about, obviously not as long and in-depth, but I basically said, uh, I think the post said what a memorable season it was. And my answer was memorable season. You went 8-10. and 10, You had a losing home record, which True Jones says, you know, he, I believe he has said it, that you should really win all your home games, and then you only have to steal a couple on the road, and you're looking at a really good record. Um, so we had a losing home record, which is embarrassing, built a Gorgeous new facility. Um, built a gorgeous new facility. And then... You only beat two playoff teams during the regular season all year. Uh, you beat Winnipeg, uh, yeah, Winnipeg once and BC once. The rest you beat up on the bottom three teams in the league. So that wasn't too promising. Um, and then, like I said, the BC game was a riot. You had a blast. But then you got embarrassed by Ottawa for the fourth time. Uh, and so I kind of let these comments on the post uh, be known. And what did this spineless social media coordinator do? Uh, he deleted my comment on Instagram. So when I saw that, I thought, well, you just started a war. So you don't, don't think that you can just delete my comment and I'm going to go away. Uh, I'm going to come back even harder. So... That's kind of where all this stemmed from. I hope you had fun. I hope you kind of agree with some of these points I'm making, and I hope you tune in. I'm going to try and keep coming up with content every week um, and just give my my takes on on the state of the Thai Cats. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Adios till next week. Now, I will say this. I do think June Jones and his team does a great job of you know, preparing throughout the week, coming out with kind of a scheme, a game plan. Obviously, the offense uh, was clipping at a high rate for a lot of the season. You know, they had the moments where they sputtered, but um, – you know, I don't want to knock him there. I think he's a great offensive coordinator. Like I said, I just think some of these game time decision makings need to change. Uh, you know, whoever's making decisions, um, something needs to shake up there, whether it be Steinauer that steps in to kind of do this. Uh, but, I mean, he was there all year. It doesn't seem like he really uh, was in June Jones' ear saying, hey, maybe we should look at doing this instead, coach. Just saying. Um, so I don't know. But uh, to wrap things up, I just want to say again, who am I? James Hemingway. Um, my, my story is, I guess my grandfather, he played for the Thai Cats and his twin brother, uh, they played left end and right end. So they both played for the Cats. So I was kind of born into it. Um, you know, I've been living and breathing Thai Cats my whole life. Um, and really the other reason why I wanted to start this podcast, I'll give you a quick story before I sign off here. It's the other day, uh, you know, I was, I was drinking a little bit and, uh, the Thai Cats threw up an Instagram post and it was something about, you know, thanking everyone for a memorable season. And so I teed off on the comments a little bit. And I didn't swear. I didn't call it anyone on a personal level. I just said, you know, I kind of laid out some points. I said, memorable season. I said, you went 8-10. and 10. Uh, You won two games against playoff teams all year. Um, you had a losing home record, which is embarrassing. I'm pretty sure June Jones even said before, you should win all your home games. Uh, that should be the expectation. You steal a couple on the road, you have a good record. Uh, so they did that. Yeah, they only beat Winnipeg and BC once. So they beat two home team or playoff teams all year. And the rest, they just beat up on the basement. And I said, yeah, sure. You, you know, you had a great Eastern semis against BC. That was a fun game. But then you got absolutely embarrassed by Ottawa for the fourth time. I said, you know, the fans need to be expecting more. This wasn't a great season. I said, Luke Tasker said it best when he said, uh, you know, it's not always the closest teams that win games. Um, so I kind of laid all this out. And I said, you know, again, we need to be expecting more. And what did the social media coordinator do for the Cats? He or she deleted my comment. Uh, yeah, didn't fire back, didn't show any balls, didn't fire back, uh, just deleted it. Didn't want that negative PR on there. Again, I didn't swear, I didn't call it anyone. Uh, it's, you know, it's spineless. It goes in with, you know, kicking on third and one or running a draw on second and long. It's consistent at least. They're consistently spineless. Uh, so if you think you can just delete my comment and I'm going to go away like that, well, I've been thinking about doing this podcast for a while. I like to think, uh, you know, I have some colorful takes on things. I like to think I kind of know what I'm talking about. I'm at all the games. I'm watching the game. I'm not 
You know, I'm not down at the bar party and I'm watching the game. I expect a win. Uh, so I finally started this thing. And uh, I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you, Ty Cats. Uh, don't just think you can delete me. You're not going to be able to delete sure. this. Uh, so, yeah, I'll see you next week. I'm going to keep trying to pump out content. Uh, follow me on social media, Ty Catholics. Uh Follow my YouTube. And uh, adios till next week. <laughs>